Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Christopher Calandra. Thanks for being on the show, Christopher. Thank you so much for having me. I was so looking forward to this uh, episode of your show. I've listened to several uh, episodes and it's a great show. So I'm really excited to be on. Great. Well, I appreciate that, Christopher. And I appreciate you listening and being a guest. Yes. Uh, but Christopher is the founder and principal of Elliott Wealth Management Services, LLC, which has offices in Connecticut and Florida. He's a certified financial planner with over 26 years of experience helping entrepreneurs, retirees, and families achieve their financial goals and objectives. He has been involved in real estate investing for over 25 years and bought his first investment property at the age of 23. His portfolio includes single family, multifamily, and commercial income producing properties. His proficiencies include investing, remodeling, maintenance, and reselling. Christopher, thanks so much for being on the show. Will you give the listeners a little more about who you are and what your focus is right now? Sure. So I'm a certified financial planner, as you said. So my primary source of income and wealth building is my firm, Elliott Wealth Management Services, where we work with individuals, families, and small businesses, helping them win with money, especially on the investment planning and financial planning side. But my background in trying to accumulate wealth myself includes a lot of real estate endeavors, including building spec homes. I've done about 10 flips over the years, invested in commercial and residential real estate. So speaking to your audience, I think is uh, really great because what I've learned over my 26 year career, Whitney, is that most people I've met that have accumulated wealth have at least a portion of that wealth in real estate. And I had wanted to talk to you and your listeners about uh, seven wealth building rules for real estate investors. And I think I answered your question. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> no, it's good. I, I know. And we, we're going to talk about, yeah, the seven keys for real estate investors to build wealth. And, and from your line of work, I mean, that's a, a great topic, right? I mean, because you are helping these individuals build this wealth and, and from so many different scenarios as well. So that I know that helps you to be extremely well like versed and rounded just to, to sure. all these different aspects that people are, uh, are in. From, you know, they got so many different scenarios, right, that you're having to help them with. That's absolutely right. And what I think you'll find is a lot of financial advisors uh, in the marketplace will kind of poo-poo the idea of investing in real estate because it's a little bit of competition. And I think that's very small-minded, but you do get that a lot, whereas – I view real estate as part of someone's overall wealth building process. Not everybody wants to get involved in real estate and some people do, but they want to be passive. Other people are really anxious to swing a hammer. But again, most people that I've met that have accumulated wealth will have at least a portion of their wealth in real estate. So I think it's an important topic. It's also been important for my wife and I, as we've built wealth over these many years is I have three, legs to the stool, if you will, as I build wealth. There's the value in my business, Whitney, and then there's the value in my real estate investments. And I'll throw my home into that category as well. And then investments in your traditional markets, 401ks, IRAs, mutual funds, stocks, bonds, college funds, that kind of thing. And I found for me, the combination of the three is much stronger than if I had all my wealth in one of those three categories. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Just more diversification. Exactly. And at times, you know, you've spoken with lots of real estate investors, you know, there's times when you might be getting knocked around in real estate, you know, prices could go down. You could have tenant related issues. You could have a project that's over budget. Uh, any number of things can happen that might be negative, at least in the short term. But I have the two other portions of my wealth that might be behaving very differently at that moment. And I think over the long term, these multiple sources of income, multiple sources of wealth, 
will lead to a better outcome for me as I move towards retirement, which is crazy to say I'm 48, but I start to think about that more and more now that I'm 48. Yeah. And that's something we have to prepare for, right? And, and hopefully sooner than later. Um, and so, you know, let's go into some of those seven keys that you're talking about, key things for real estate investors to know to build wealth. And I love to, can't wait to hear it from your perspective too, since you've seen so many different scenarios. So yeah. So seven wealth building rules for real estate investors. Step one is establish goals. And this is a cliche. If any of your listeners and you probably have listened to shows, read books, I mean, this is very basic, but it is so very important. I'm a big believer in you have to write down your goals and you have to have the ability to think both short term as well as mid and long term. So you want to establish your goals. Uh, that's number one. Number two is you need to get prepared. You need to be educated. You need to do your homework. And I think this applies to everything we just spoke about. So if you want to be a real estate investor and you're not now, if you want to put together a syndicate or be part of a syndicate, I think we could probably agree that you want to do your homework. You could end up in a bad situation. You could make a mistake. And knowledge is the great defender. So you want to do your homework and be prepared. One of, I think, the keys to my success in real estate as well as in business is I tend to prepare really well. And that doesn't mean I haven't had bad real estate deals because I have and not everything goes perfectly, but do your homework, get educated, know what you're doing, talk to people, read, attend seminars, go to workshops, be prepared. If you're investing in real estate, it is not something that you will likely be able to do successfully unless you put in the time. So that's step two. How does that sound so far? Yeah, you got to put the time in. Right. And no matter what endeavor it is, if you plan to be successful. Absolutely. And then number three is to develop a wealth building plan. And I think this is a very important part of my seven steps. And I think it's one that's kind of overlooked. So if we talk about real estate investing, um, have a wealth building plan, what you want to buy. Uh, do you want to be part of a syndicate? Do you want to be the head of the syndicate or do you want to be a member of the syndicate? Or do you want to flip where you're actually at the property doing the demos and fixing up the property? Or would you do flips more like I did where I subcontracted that out and I had a partner that did a lot of the in the trenches work. Uh, but you have to have the plan that works for you based on your skills and have an end game. I think one of the things that I've experienced Whitney over the 26 years is lots of people think they want to get involved in something and they want to buy something or own real estate or buy, uh, buy an income producing property. But you often are going to be well served if you figure out what your end game is and to work backwards. Do you want to hold property long term or do you want to turn it in the relatively short period of time? Do you want to generate income? Uh, do you want to be commercial or residential? But you want to develop a wealth building plan. Moving away from real estate, I think it's the same thing. If you're looking at investing for retirement, there are lots of vehicles that are available to you. You have 401ks, traditional IRAs, other IRAs, profit sharing plans. There's a whole variety of tools, if you will, vehicles that could help you fund future retirement needs. Um, but you need to develop a plan on how you're gonna fund them, how you're gonna invest, how much you're gonna put in, how much risk you're gonna take, and this may sound kind of scary. I'm not trying to overwhelm your listeners. It's really not that complex, but you do want to develop a wealth building plan. I mentioned earlier, my wealth building plan is that three pronged approach. I want to increase the value of my business. Number one, I want to increase the value and the performance of my real estate holdings. And then I want to manage my investments in traditional stocks and bonds very, very well so that I could drive good long-term performance. So that's step three. Great. Yeah, that makes sense. You're diversified and you're, you're trying to nurture all three of those things to make sure they're all improving and increasing. Absolutely. Now for some people, probably not your listeners, some people don't want to invest in real estate. Maybe they should, but some people don't want to do that. Other people don't have a small business like I do. So maybe they're focused on only one of the three or somebody else may have two of the three. Uh, so you could put together the combination, but you definitely want to develop a wealth building plan. A lot of 
what we do for our clients here at LA Wealth Management is to help them figure out what their wealth building plan is and then help them execute that where we can be helpful. Step number four is to build a team. In your recent episode, I think it was number 176 with, um, with Vinny, he talked a little bit about that. You want to build your network because this is a team activity building wealth. And I know in the episode you did with Vinny, he talked about finding a partner in real estate. I think he also mentioned an attorney. I know recently you had an attorney on. She was, she was great. I can't remember her name. But you want to build your network. That would include, I know I'm being self-serving, Whitney, but your certified financial planner is great to have on your team. I am great to have on your team. Uh, but then also real estate agents, inspectors, attorneys, and you may have one attorney for real estate matters, but you might have another attorney for other matters like will and estate planning, um, tradesmen, lenders. And one I don't think I heard mentioned on the show previously was to have a really good certified public accountant or a CPA. Uh, if you're investing in real estate, if you're building wealth, uh, having a good CPA is also a key part of your team. You can't do it all. You can't know everything. Uh, so building a team helps you be prepared and helps minimize your mistakes and maximize good decision making. So that's step number four. How are we doing so far? We're doing good. We're, go we're doing good. I'm making some notes and we're going to come back to a few things. All right. Awesome. And then number five is to track your progress. Again, I think this is something that is very underutilized. I am a huge fan of keeping track of your worth on a net worth statement. In the business world, it's called a balance sheet. So there are ways you could do this um, technologically. Uh, on your Apple phone, there's an app that even comes standard where you could uh, keep track of your net worth. I personally do it a little old school on a spreadsheet. But basically what I do, Whitney, is I have listed all my assets. I have listed all my liabilities. And if I take my assets and I subtract from that my liabilities, that tells me what my net worth is. Because the way we're playing the game, the reason why people invest in a syndicate is to build wealth, to make money. Money is not the end all, the be all, but that's what we're pursuing is building wealth. So like any game, you wanna keep track of your progress. And the way that you keep track in my mind is to keep track of your net worth statement. You could do it as infrequently as one year. I wouldn't suggest doing it less than that. I'm a tremendous geek, as you probably could tell after just a few minutes. So I keep track quarterly and it doesn't take me much time because how often do the assets or the liabilities change? They don't change that much. Um, and it's all set up and I run the numbers every quarter uh, so that I know if I'm making good decisions it'll be reflected in my increased wealth. And it also highlights that there's really only two levers that I could really pull. I could either increase my assets or decrease my liabilities. And once your liabilities get to zero, then there's only one lever you could really pull, and that is to increase your assets. The last thing I'll say about that, Whitney, is for, for geeks like me and for people that are trying to build wealth and are really out there entrepreneurially and focused on getting smarter and making good decisions and partnering is it's tremendously motivating when I could look at my net worth statement and I could go back a number of years and see how my wealth has increased, how I have more assets, how I have less liabilities and my net worth is growing. It may not be every single quarter, but it's tremendously motivating to see it unfold as I have a bigger and bigger net worth. It's like, like going to the gym for three months. You know, after the third or fourth month, you start to see some results, right? That's the plan. Absolutely. But not the first week. <laughs> and additionally, in real estate, like other endeavors, cash flow is very important. So two other ways that you could track your progress in addition to the net worth statement is to have a P&L. So I have a profit and loss statement for my practice, LA Wealth Management, but I also have a P&L for my real estate holdings. And I could also look at a profit and loss statement for each of my individual real estate holdings. Uh, because you might have a portfolio of, let's say, five properties. And if you only look at the five properties, Whitney, it may mask that one of the properties has a problem. So I like to look at it as a group, but I also like to look at it individually to drill down into how each of the 
properties in my portfolio are doing. And at certain points, properties may be underperforming and looking at a profit and loss statement will uncover that. And the last of the track your progress items is to have an income statement. Is it amazes me how few, how many people are not aware of where they're generating income from, especially entrepreneurs. They're out there making deals, hustling, working incredibly hard, trying to be creative, but I think they're making a huge mistake if they don't keep track of where their income is coming from. So I also keep track of where my income sources are, broken out by the categories we talked about at the top of the show. I could look at what income I'm getting from my business, the LEA Wealth Management Services Investment Planning Practice, but then I could look at the income I'm getting from the properties, again, as a whole, but also individually by property. And then lastly, look at my investment portfolio and keep track of what income that portfolio is generating in my investment portfolio, you know, IRAs, 401ks, that kind of thing. I'm not taking that income now, it's all being reinvested. But at some point when I retire, it'll be common for like most people, I will want to draw money out. I messed that line up. Uh, but it'll be common while well, I want to start taking the income out. So I kind of keep an eye on what kind of income I can get from that portion of my nest egg. Even though I'm not taking it now, I want to keep an eye towards the future to see what that would do for me when the time comes and I do want to drive, drive an income. So that's number five, track your progress. Well, I, that yeah, you got to track it or how do you know where you're going? Hey there, Brandon Hall here, CEO of The Real Estate CPA. If you're a general partner in the syndication business, you probably get a lot of questions from current and potential investors about the tax consequences of investing in your deals. It's no secret that confidence sells and builds trust. Our most successful clients know how to talk to their investors about the tax consequences of their investment opportunities. Join us at one of our free virtual workshops to learn how to confidently answer common tax questions from your potential investors. This offer is only available to listeners of the Real Estate Syndication Show. Seats are limited. Sign up today by visiting www.therealestatecpa.com slash syndication. Absolutely. But it is crazy. In my experience, I've met some really talented, hardworking, smart real estate investors, as well as other entrepreneurs. And they're so busy trying to work day in and day out on what's in front of them that they don't do this important wealth building steps. And I think they increase the risks that they make a mistake or they miss an opportunity because they're too focused on what's happening in the trenches. And that could be really intense, but you need to step back and take a view of what's going on on the macro level with your real estate and with your wealth building activities. So that's why number five is so important. And I would say it goes back to your team a little bit. If you're too busy in the trenches, hopefully you're doing those high dollar tasks, but hopefully you have somebody on your team that can help you do some of the tracking. Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up because one of the hallmarks of my practice and working with clients is if you became my client today, Whitney, one of the things that we would want to, uh, explore with you is how often should we meet to review things? So let's just say for argument's sake, it's every six months. So that means every six months, I'm going to talk to you about um, your portfolio, review your goals, see what's might have changed either with your goals and objectives or in your financial situation. We're going to review your investment plan, review your returns, your risk level, and by checking in with our clients on a regular basis, could be quarterly, could be semi-annually, could be annually, um, we find that our clients have greater levels of satisfaction and increases the chances that we make really good financial decisions and avoid potential pitfalls. Just that checking in, that communication, um, really leads to better long-term investment results. And that's an important part of what we do for our clients here. And tracking your progress, I think, again, lots of times just gets lost because everybody has crazy lives and they're busy. And if they got families at home, it's lots of demands on our time. But this is really, really important and very well worth the little amount of time I put to this each quarter for myself. I like it. 
So we're on to number six, um, be diversified. Um, my mantra has always been, I never wanted to do anything, whether it was in my business or in my investing or in my real estate investing, I never wanted to do anything that I would blow myself up. Now that's my own terminology. I never wanted to try and take down something that I, I could possibly choke on. Now, listen, if you have listeners that are out there that are in their 20s, they might be uh, more apt to take on risk. They may have less resources. Um, so it may not be the same advice for them, but I still think that if you're investing and you're trying different things, especially in the real estate, real estate realm, there's really no reason to do something that you could really wreck yourself and have it be difficult to recover from. If you've spoken with real estate investors, if you do enough deals, it's going to be some that don't work out. I mean, it's, it's, it's a numbers game. Even the best real estate investors, I used to use like Donald Trump as an example, but in today's world, you really can't do that anymore. But you know, any, Body I've ever met that it does deals real estate wise or buying and selling of businesses or anything. If they're putting themselves out there and they're, and they're trying to build wealth and they're high income earners and affluent folks, they've all got knocked around, but I've always tried not to do anything. And what I would advise people to do is be diversified and don't enter into deals that would blow you up. I don't know if that's a good term for it, but that's my term. No, I like that. Very risky. Yeah. There's ways to mitigate risk um, and being diversified is one of them. We talked about it already a few times. I diversify my risk by having my three, uh, the three components of my wealth building plan. Um, another way is to have an emergency fund. Uh, Whitney, we're big believers is if you're investing and you're doing different things with your money, you should have an emergency fund a certain amount of money that you have in the bank so that if you needed some money in a pinch, you would not have to sell out of the syndicate. You wouldn't have to sell your multifamily house. You wouldn't have to sell your flip prematurely. Uh, and the amount of money that someone should have, have in their emergency fund depends on circumstances, but having some money available is a good idea. You should not invest your last nickel. And that's common sense, but sometimes people get so excited and so enthused uh, because real estate investors, I think, by and large, are optimistic, hard-charging folks. But you do want to mitigate your risk. An emergency fund is a good, simple way to do that. Not put all your eggs in one deal. Um, and look at other opportunities. I love real estate, but I'm glad that all of my wealth is not just in real estate. Uh, real estate does have a downside. It lacks liquidity. It is subject to economic ups and downs. Uh, it is a great long-term wealth building vehicle, but if you're dealing with tenants, the tenants don't always behave. If you're flipping, uh, you're not always able to flip as fast as you want. If you're involved in a syndicate, sometimes the exit of that syndicate may take longer, or maybe it doesn't generate as much cash flow because you have unexpected expenses. Uh, things can happen. So being diversified, I think, is a clearer path to success and being diversified is a really important contributor to that. So I like that I have uh, five investment portfolio, five properties in my investment portfolio right now. And I have some commercial and I have some residential. I have an office building. I also have multifamily. I also have one single family. I personally like that I have a couple of different types and that really works for me. It may not work for everyone, but that's another way that I diversify by having different property types. Yeah. So you're not just real estate or just stocks and bonds or, or whatever, or your business specifically or personally, but even in the real estate sector of that, you're going to diversify amongst different properties, maybe different syndicators even, or even if it's your own portfolio, you may do single family, multifamily, commercial. Absolutely. And I, I have one office building um, and I have uh, two partners in it. And actually my business is headquartered in it. Um, and a few years ago, it was not performing well. You know, we just had trouble and uh, I don't want to go into the details because time won't allow it, but it was really a rough year. We had to put money into it. And for real estate investors, when you have a deal and you got to put money in and you're not taking money out, it's, can I say sucks? <laughs> it, it really sucks. Um, but now it's performing so well. So a couple of years ago, I didn't really like the property. It wasn't performing well. 
Um, but now it's performing great. But you know what? A couple of years ago, the property that I loved best is now the one that's struggling a bit. We had a bad tenant and we're going through an eviction process and it's been a little bit of a drag. Um, so with the properties in any given year, you know, there's going to be one that I like the best, which is always the one that is generating the most amount of revenue and I do the least amount of work, but they're going to flip places over time. And I think that's normal. And over the arc of time, as I do this year in and year out, uh, all of them will work out, but it makes the ride a little bit smoother. And that's how I've positioned myself. And the amount of diversification between real estate versus traditional investments versus possibly a small business, we could throw bank holdings into there as well. You know, that's something that has to be worked out because there's no single right answer for everyone. But I think being diversified is the right answer for most people most of the time. And then when we get to number seven, be careful with debt. I'm not religious in saying you should borrow as much as you can, nor am I religious saying don't borrow at all, a la Dave Ramsey. But I do think you need to be careful with debt. Uh, again, that's one way that you can blow yourself up. Um, debt magnifies returns, but it also magnifies losses. So I just urge people to be really careful with debt. I do subscribe to what Robert Kiyosaki of Rich Dad, Poor Dad fame says, is I do believe there's a difference between good debt and bad debt, bad debt being consumer debt, like car loans and credit cards. That stuff you should really stay away from. You're not going to accumulate wealth with big credit card debt. Uh, but when you're using debt to buy properties, uh, I think it's okay. But you do want to be very sober about doing it. Be very careful. Be very discriminating. And don't get yourself in a mess. So step number seven is be careful with debt. Yeah, I like how you talked about debt magnifies returns, uh, but it also magnifies losses. <laughs> yeah. And when you go to seminars about real estate and they talk about the wonders of investing in real estate, I don't believe a lot of those presentations adequately explain the risks of debt on the downside. And I'm all interested in the upside, but you need to have a keen awareness that having debt can really be problematic. So you want to be careful. You want to have going back to the emergency fund, Whitney, you know, if you're using debt, but you have cash behind it, well, I mean, that in and of itself is a way to mitigate the risk. But if you borrow as much as you can and you have nothing in reserve, those are the people I like to buy real estate from. Because when something bad happens, they become very motivated sellers because That's they right. have no options. And it's not to say I want to prey on anyone that ends up in a mess, but that is the reality of the situation. Um, but if you have cash reserves and you haven't borrowed everything you possibly could and you don't have it all on the line, you could withstand some negativity and overcome some obstacles. So you want to be careful. I'm glad you like that point because yeah. I think it's a really important one too. Unfortunately, we're about out of time, but I wanted to ask you though, just a couple of minutes about uh, if, if somebody's obviously as a financial planner, they're speaking with you about their, uh, you know, about their wealth building strategies, what they're doing, where they're at in this process of building wealth. And they come to you with a, a syndication deal and they say, Hey, you know, Christopher, uh, I'm thinking about investing in this, this real estate deal. You know, what does that look like? What kind of guidance can you provide them? How much you know, into in depth into that, are, are you able to get with them? Sure, we could get into as much depth as they want to. Um, when I'm working with clients, it's one of those value added kind of things and, and it's a good way for me to learn. So if they present me with the documents, I could review it and advise them knowing who they are, what their goals are, what their overall financial situation. I'm in a good position to give an unbiased opinion and I'm just looking out for my client. My client's best interests come first. So I'll give them my plain spoken, un um, how do I say that? Plain spoken, independent opinion on whether it's a good deal or not. And sometimes clients will follow my advice and sometimes they won't. Um, but having that candid conversation I think is really helpful because maybe I could give them some thoughts that they hadn't considered before. I'll give you a quick example. I had a client come in. She was in a partnership. It has nothing to do with real estate, but she was in a partnership. The partnership soured and she kind of got blindsided and got bounced out of the partnership. And she really kind of essentially got knocked down. So we had met about a week later 
and we went through some of the financial ramifications of this. And she's like, all right, I, I think I found this business I want to buy into. And she wanted to talk about that. And what my conversation with her, Whitney, was like, I'm like, listen, time out, Maggie. I've known her a long time. I'm like, you know, maybe you should just take your time. I mean, you just took a big body blow and you don't need to rush into anything. And, you know, that kind of advice that I gave her is not really about investments, but it's about knowing your client, wanting to be helpful, putting their needs above all else. And that was the idea. She's like, you know what, Chris, you're right. It's just a week. Um, I, I'm not even sleeping yet because I'm so bummed out about what happened. And so that's not the time I think she ought to plow into another deal. She doesn't have to. She could take her time. So that's the kind of example I would give. I'll look at deals all the time with clients and give them their, my opinion, and then they could do with it what they will. No, that's great. That's great. I, I just wondered about if, if someone came to you with a deal like that or a syndication deal, you know, uh, with, with somebody, a financial planner like yourself, really pursue being able to help them uh, know if that's a, a deal for them or not, uh, or yeah. the best opportunity. That's Do awesome. it all the time. Uh, so Christopher, unfortunately, we're out of time, but tell the listeners how they can learn more about you and, and get in touch with you. Sure. A couple of quick things. I'm a, a podcaster too. So my podcast is Simply Financial with Christopher Calandra. So please check that out. Uh, go to the website, www.elliotwealth.com. You can get more information about me and the team. We have a special tab on the homepage and you could get a white paper that talks more about the seven rules for real estate um, wealth building or wealth building for real estate investors. So if your listeners click on that tab, um, we'll send them a free report. We covered just kind of a quick view of this, but if they want a deeper dive, they could do that as well at the website. They could sign up for a complimentary initial consultation where uh, they could discuss with me their goals and objectives. We could talk to them about how we might be able to help them win with money like we've done with our other clients. So the Simply Financial Podcast, the ElliottWealth.com website, click on the tab and get the free white paper report that talks more about what you and I discussed today and sign up for the complimentary no cost consultation. Awesome. Thank you, Christopher. Thanks for offering that white paper and the free consultation to the listeners. I hope the listeners will reach out to Christopher. I hope they'll also go to LifeBridge Capital and connect with me. I'm also happy to get on a call and help you any way I can. Hope you'll also go to our Facebook group, the Real Estate Syndication Show, and where we can learn and grow uh, our businesses from experts like Christopher. And we will talk to each of you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.